You're listening to DraftKings Network. Folks, this year the big game is not just for football fans. It's time to go all in on food. Tums and DraftKings have teamed up to create a free-to-play pool so you can get in on the action and keep on snacking. There's a share of $10,000 up for grabs. To take home the cheddar, just make the right picks about America's game day grub. Play free in the Tums Prop Bites pool on DraftKings to score big without the burn. Learn more at TumsPropBites.com. Eligibility restrictions apply. Void where prohibited. See DraftKings.com for details. Presented by DraftKings Fantasy Sports. Check out what DraftKings has to offer this season with Code Dan. Because life's more fun when you're in on the action. DraftKings, the crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler. Age and eligibility restrictions apply. Void where prohibited. See DraftKings.com for details. One of the things that happens with elevated playoff football is that somehow the weekend goes by and no one talks about Damian Lillard, how he won the end of that game against Sacramento. Do you guys even know what I'm talking about? Do you guys uh, even have any familiarity with the fact that Milwaukee and Sacramento played a game into the 140s and Damian Lillard came down the court and getting over just over half court uh, took a three-pointer and nailed the three-pointer uh, from a distance that is absurd for just about everybody except for him and Steph Curry. A distance, I know more and more NBA players are shooting from distance. I know Trey Young can do it and Halliburton can do it. There are a lot of guys who can do it, but Lillard has a bit, has trade bar, trademarked a bit making that shot in that spot from distance where you're almost not even surprised by it. And it just gets buried by the news stream. When did this happen? I think it happened Friday? Sunday. Saturday? No, Saturday. Sunday. No, Saturday, I was busy. Friday night. Saturday. Yeah, Saturday, we got a quarterback. I'm just just all over the place. All right, you've been wanting to talk about that all show. You've been Have wanting I? to talk about Cam Ward. Yes, oh, you've been Cam wanting Ward. to talk wow. about the University of Miami getting Cam oh, Ward soup all soup. show. So, oh, the soup show is no Tony. It was a it was a lunatic. It was a lunatic weekend. What can you tell people? Because uh, Mike Ryan has a lot more information than he reports. He's uh, sort of navigating a labyrinth here between being a booster being a pl- you know a, a player yeah, in some of this business stuff QB5, he's that's what they playing no a player yeah. in the business like, parts up, of this player like pla it's an a yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah with an i'd like to distance myself from that designation and just uh, donate to the program that i love and uh, that allows me to clear up any misinformation that's out there and occasionally break some stuff and yes, the soup's always known. I'd like to appreciate all 612, last I checked, subscribers, less than a cup of coffee. You have access to all of this amazing news, including you would have had your finger on the pulse of the Alabama head coaching search way better than uh, non-soups. But uh, yeah, Saturday, one of the craziest days in football recruitment history. I never thought I'd see something crazier than the pursuit of Cormani McLean and the pursuit of Cam Ward takes the cake. So here's the scenario on Saturday. If you would have asked me, by the way, five minutes before, as we tout how plugged in I am, if you would have asked me five minutes before the announcement came down that Cam Ward was committing to the University of Miami, you would have asked me who's going to be Miami's quarterback next year, I would have told you Talia Tagovailoa. So Saturday, and we have uh, eyewitness reports of Talia, that he was on campus. And he was on campus because he's a grad student and he's able to look at um, master's programs. And while he was there, conversations happened. Now, Talia and his representatives had growing optimism that he was actually going to get a waiver. Now, a waiver that doesn't appear to have gone his way. Um, I was told as such, and today, Talia officially entered the NFL draft. Yesterday was the deadline for that stuff. He would have automatically been entered, but he did not get the waiver. But throughout Saturday, he was looking more and more, because his reps were sharing this information, that he was. So much so that Talia himself was texting other players in the portal saying that he was going to enroll in Miami. Miami was prepared to fight this with the NCAA and wait it out. Essentially, Talia would have just taken his chances in the supplemental draft if a ruling didn't come down in a timely fashion. But Word was spreading about Talia and Miami gaining traction. So Cam Ward's camp circled back around, as I told you they always would. Mm. Told you that they were playing this game with the 15th. Now, Cam Ward, it wasn't the easiest recruitment process on him. In fact, he put Miami in a very difficult position more than once with a commitment and decommitment hours later. 
on signing day, on early signing day, there was a there was a point if you would have asked me, we got Cam Ward and Jeremiah Smith. And there was a notion that Cam Ward did equal er- Jeremiah Smith. Jeremiah Smith ends up going to Ohio State. A couple weeks ago, Cam Newton, uh, Cam Ward did the very same thing, committed to the University of Miami. Miami cancels official visits, and then he de- decommits the next morning, all because he had this game plan. And the game plan was out. Miami knew that he was waiting to the 15th. But inevitably, he circles back around. Since he had already agreed to come to the University of Miami and his camp had already talked things out, it was a very quick-moving process thereafter. Once Miami got word that Talia was not going to get the extra year of eligibility, they pivoted to the conversations with Cam Ward, and he became your next quarterback. Now, Cam Ward says he has, he's has he been told that he has a day two, day three grade in the NFL draft. I don't doubt that he's being told by someone that, but I think he would have gotten an invite to the Senior Bowl if that were the case. He got invited to the Shrine Bowl, and I should tell you where exactly he lies in the pecking order. For Miami, this is a major get. This was the top quarterback in the transfer portal. This was their number one target. They had a group of guys that if they were good to go and, and, and said right then and there they'd join Miami, they probably would have taken them. But in their eyes, this was the main prize in Cam Ward. Before I ask about Cam Ward, um, I wonder if you might look back and review the Poffenbarger era. At UM. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cam Ward's coming here to Miami, and that's great depth behind B- Big Poff Daddy. I'm a big fan of Poff, but as I told you when Poff and Barger committed to the University of Miami, this was more of an eye towards 2025. He has two years of eligibility. He was told about their pursuits of other quarterbacks. It's not a surprise to that room that it is now much improved that they have Cam Ward, Reese Poff and Barger, Jakari Brown, who is for the moment committed to Miami and battling it out. 2025 has always kind of been the timeline for him, so we'll see who wins that battle. But right now, Miami's quarterback room is much better shaped. Now it's all about getting more talent around him. Without having a quarterback in place, there was a lot of good wide receivers that were in the portal that went for more sure things. We'll see what happens in the spring. It's a moot question at this point, but who would have excited you more as a UM quarterback in 24, Cam Ward or Talia? So I think the pursuit of Cam Ward had some red flags in it. Now, credit to the kid, he's not an issue. He's a National Honor Society member. Everyone says that, by all accounts, he's a good kid. This is a difficult recruitment process. There are other people. He had a very large camp. Um, But Talia, I started pivoting more to him just because culture fit and all that, and I wasn't pushed away by decommitments that put Miami in a very difficult position. That being said... If you look at the pros, and I know Talia is the all-time Big Ten passing leader, and that's a great conference. That's a conference of Drew Brees. I think pro prospects, Cam Ward has better pro prospects, and there is a big argument to be had for him coming back. Now, there's stuff in his game to not like. Fumbles the ball about once a game, had a bad offensive line. That won't be the case here. But I will say that in my mind, I think this is the most talented thrower of the football Miami has had in my adult life. And probably dating back to Vinny Testaverde, they haven't had an arm talent quite like this. He can make every throw from every angle. He's a, he's a really good prospect. And Tony, now, Tony, why Stephen you Morris would like a word, I'm a Mike big, Ryan. Dude, dude, you know I'm a huge Shooch. Stephen Morris guy. I myself did not want to put myself out there by even invoking Stephen Morris because this is a dude with true NFL prospects. He would have probably got snagged in the later rounds here. But this guy is an unbelievable talent at the position. And the staff will acknowledge that by making this a move, by having Cam Ward here on the, on the team, the expectations for year three under Mario Cristobal are rightfully nine wins, worst case scenario. And if they're not, they know what's coming for them. Lucy, I saw, even though you're wearing your white Lotus sunglasses, that your eyes lit up as Mike Ryan talked that behind a a paywall, he gave you the Alabama coaching information before anyone else. I know you're fascinated by this Alabama coaching stuff. Yeah, my, I've loved it for a couple reasons. One, I love the memorial that they've put together for a very much alive Nick Saban. Like, my entire TikTok feed is just people, like, grieving the loss and having to let these kids who, like, aren't that familiar with college football know they're like, he's not dead. He is alive. He is just retired. And I, I kind of figured that Kalen DeBoer was where they were going to head just when Dan Lanning said no. It felt like that was just the natural progression, especially with everything he was losing at Washington. And I don't know how I feel about it. Like, I think he was so amazing at Washington. But, like, 
I don't know if I'm sold yet when his like argument to his like the the players at Alabama is like just give me a chance please like just give me a chance and then also I'm kind of like mentally ill and I really thought Ryan Grubb was going to take the Iowa offensive <laughs> coordinator job oh, I'm sorry. because he's from Iowa <laughs> and he lived there and I thought he was going to take it and I really love that Alabama hired someone in three days and it's been over 70 days and Iowa hasn't filled that role yet I'm doing really good I'm doing so great right now <laughs> I'm not crying under these glasses at all. Cody, how are you holding up here? Because you petered out a couple of segments ago. The show you gets... love that expression. You really do. No, that's a that's like a go to expression for you referring to me petered out. I don't consider myself petering out. Um, as, <laughs> as you say that, I'm petering up. You know, not out. I'm petering in. I mean, turn that they, thumb this way. Whatever the opposite of petering out is, that's what I'm doing. You know, I don't know how to explain that any better. You're petering in. Yeah. Damn right I am. You know, I had the, the, the good Poffenbarger line. The Poffenbarger era is over. Let's, you know, let's, let's ha- honor that before we move on to Cam Ward, you know. So anyway, what were you saying? You were going to say something to me? Go ahead. It's your show, not mine. You got the floor. Go ahead. Yeah, it, that's true. <laughs> you got that right. Ah, that was only said in your headset. Whatever was said in your headset, you know, that I, you I, were I hear with. voices. That's the problem. What were you just agreeing with? What did What did somebody get that First right? First of all, on? I'm not a racist. Okay, let's get that. <laughs> let's get that straight. 